So you're going to get whipped around, Sarah. That's okay. Just let it go. Yeah, I saw that's picking up a little bit. Hey, how's it going, Mike? So the power of telepresence has allowed us to reach us to places all around the world. And I'd like to shout out a few of those places for where all of you are checking in from. So earlier we had somebody coming from Barbados, all the way in Caribbean. Person has left, but this is nice to see that we have some people representing that area of the world. We got some folks from the UK, Norway, New Zealand. 
as well as Germany, Italy, and Portugal. Even Uruguay and South America. I see United States is pretty much representing a big portion, but it's nice to see that the rest of the world's tuning in too. Yeah, the video from Atlanta can be seen on satellite feed two. So aboard our ship, our powered telepresence allows us to access satellite internet to reach you all currently today. And because we have a very small bandwidth that we operate in, that means that we can't have too many devices on our feed. Everything that we see here in the control van is dedicating a lot of bandwidth to stream live to you all today. So when it comes to our own personal devices, we often have to keep them down to a minimum. That includes no streaming of any kind. So uh, we can't stream the latest Netflix show, but we can download anything that we feel that we want to watch while we're out here. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to give a shout out to whoever's from Philly. Hello. From the city of brotherly love, welcome. Since we're giving shout outs, anyone from Alabama, you know? So for those of you tuning in again, welcome aboard the Exploration Vessel Nautilus. We are here currently in the north-northwest area of the Kimgan Reef. This is an area of the ocean that is owned by the United States as a U.S. territory. This is under a jurisdiction of the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. We are currently on our first voyage of the season, NA-149, to the Kingman Palmyra Atolls. 
And we're currently exploring an unnamed geode or a tabletop seamount. So many of us come from all around the country and all around the world with different backgrounds that lead us here to Nautilus. So I'd like to give a little interview for those of you who are in the chat who are turning in. So for my own personal journey to get here, my name is Daniel. I'm your SPL here. I graduated from West Virginia University last year with the Bachelor's in Geology. And this brought me to a job that I worked at as a park ranger in Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. This experience in science communication led me to be the science communication fellow aboard the EV today. And this is where I'm broadcasting to you. You can pass that along. Hi, um, my name is Sarah Vanishore. I'm from Temple University, Philadelphia, PA. Um, and I came along Nautilus Live just from working in my lab at Temple. And um, my PI just happened to receive an email with Nautilus needing another scientist, and I was just able to come along. So that's how I'm here. And um, I guess I'll also mention that if you'd like to learn more about us and um, anyone on the watch or anyone on this expedition, you can go to our website and where um, I believe the live stream is. Whoever's on the watch, you can click our photo and you can read more about us. So just for the back row, um, sorry, we're, we're, we're on our proper descent now. So we're all back on the back of the ship and we had to sort out a turn in the, uh, in the tether. So we won't be long to the bottom now, five minutes. Sweet. Thank you. And our, our altimeters start giving us data at about 100 meters. And then, uh, so we're watching for that and we get a bottom depth that's supposed to be 2660, so use it as a guide, right? Uh, trust but verify kind of thing. Well, my depth is here, my altitude is here, so this will give you garbage numbers until it can hit. Yeah. Daniel, what was the, um, what was like the little introduction we were supposed to be doing? Yeah, you can just talk about uh, your career path to working at Wharton Nautilus and how you found out about our program. Okay, um, I am Guadalupe Zapata. I am an undergrad from Tuskegee University and I found out about Nautilus through um, a club at Tuskegee called Ocean Exploration. Um, I just visited Mississippi's Marine Center and they just talked about all like the different opportunities and stuff, internships, and Nautilus so happened to be one of the internships. So here I am and I'm really glad to be here. Yay, Luke. We're glad to have you. Uh, I am Leela Bellucci. I am sitting right now in one of the side seats. I'm science manager on this cruise. Um, so I help liaise between the science team, both ashore, people who are participating uh, from off the ship, and also the science team on the boat, and the other folks who we have sitting in the van and on various teams, and oversee the processing of our samples and also the management of all the data that's affiliated with those samples and with the dives that we're doing here. I make sure that all goes to the right place so that after the cruise, scientists can, um, uh, can, can look at and access that data in an organized way. And then, um, and I also help ship the samples off to the repositories where scientists can then request those samples from. That's my role. And I'll also be Alternating with Dwight watch leading on this on this uh, watch. Was there anything I didn't touch on? Any questions there? Like things you're supposed to say about ourselves? Nope, that's pretty good. Sweet. Good job. So I have one quick question, if Dwight. You, if you can answer. Do you know what the salinity and pH is right here? 
We have that up over here. Uh, I don't know if you have that up yet, Dwight. Yeah, it's so the salinity, so we have in front of us all the data from the CTD, it stands for Conductivity, Temperature, and Depth sensor that's on Hercules, uh, and there's also an oxygen sensor, dissolved oxygen sensor. Um, and Loopy, do you want to read off what you have on your screen for, for those values? So yeah, um, so currently Herc's um, depth is at 2,520 meters right now. Um, the water temperature is 1.90 degrees Celsius. The oxygen is 23.8% um, the O2 saturation is like 103.7 uh, hmm, micromoles per liter and then um, the salinity is 37 34.7 uh, PSU so yeah yeah no pH uh, no pH sensor on on the on the CTD. So, what's the importance of taking these measurements? Um, a lot of biology uh, communities respond to changes in these basic environmental parameters. Um, the oxygen in particular is important for us to be keeping an eye on at various depths. It's, it changes throughout the ocean, but somewhere between like 600 and 1,000 meters deep, there is an oxygen minimum zone um, where for various reasons the oxygen is consumed and not replaced in that layer. Um, and so the oxygen is particularly low, and, and you can see that reflected in the, in the types and density of organisms that are present there. So that's one of the things that we look at a lot. Um, other than that, I mean, salinity and temperature are fairly consistent in the deep sea. Here we're at two degrees Celsius. Um, it's somewhere between like two and four in a lot of the places that we dive. Uh, yeah, so, so not too variable there, but um, just important important basic parameters to affiliate with all of your sample collections and observations. And a question about sea life. Do you think we'll end up finding a ton of cops on this trip? would love to find a Chana Cups on this trip. Uh, we can't make any promises and you never know, but, but hopefully we continue to have good luck with the weather and get to keep sending the ROV down and going for long dives. And uh, yeah, I don't know, but I would love to see a Chana Cups anglerfish. The little frowns are so cute. Yeah, they're so small, they're adorable. Uh, 15 meters a minute. Okay, folks, we're pretty much, we're 60 meters off the bottom here now. So, we'll just take it easy. I can see there's a little bit of a slope in front of Argus there on the sonar.
So we'll go to 30 meter altitude unless uh, that causes us a problem, but I think that's okay. The, the slope there. I keep saying uh, Argus, but it's not Argus, it's Atalanta. It's so hard when everywhere on all our buttons it's it still also says all Argus. Y yeah, this is, it's all over the screens. <laughs> yeah. Four or five Arguses I'm looking at here. <laughs> So then when you do this herc thing, you've got to kind of back down and go down at the same time. And then when you get enough relief in the tether, you can turn around, fly on there, and then kind of pop back up a little. I look at that, I look at the delta, and I look at the distance between the two of them on the nav screen. Yeah. All right. On bottom. Oh, we, we see our first. Bottom. We see our first images of mm -hmm. the C4 bottom on this dive. And we are currently 2,652 meters below the ocean surface. So, uh, sorry, there's Sarah. See what's happening when, as Herc is coming back, Argus is getting dragged in there. So just be prepared now. See, so you're getting onto your 20 meter contour. You might wanna, it's okay for the, for the moment, but uh, be ready to come up easy. It's not a big cliff or anything, just be aware. Just covered in life. Look at that. <laughs> it's a whole other world down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and turn around here and see how that works. I'm not that close, though, so it might not. Okay.
can't quite make out if there's anything alive yet. Probably is that we just can't see, but yeah, lots of rocks. Just gonna probably take a second to. I don't know if RV is checking gauges. We're gonna white balance. Uh, we got a few things to do. Yep. I want to get Herc out in front of Argus. Video is yep. gonna have to do white balance. Nav has to get bottom bottom nav on. Yep. I'm gonna test out the still cam while that's happening. Leela, what's the function of the still cam? Um, yeah. Still so cam. So come up a few meters. Come up five. The still cam is intended to take high quality photos. So we have the, the two Zeus cameras. So you can um, start to see Herb's lights. Hold on. Yeah. I'm gonna turn off the front row a little. Um, we have the two Zeus cameras uh, on on Atalanta and on Herc, uh, and those take great images. But um, ooh, there we have a sea lily, stocked crinoid. Um, but this takes really awesome shots uh, of of what we're seeing um, that can be used for outreach and science communication. Um, they're just really high resolution. It's a Sony camera that's in a deep sea housing um, built by, manufactured by Sexton. So keep coming up on the winch there, Sarah, till we get the, the cliff outside your 20 meter, or the slope outside your 20 meter mark there. It is actually steeper than we suspected. Some fun faces here. Yeah, and if you guys can see, uh, right in the middle of the screen, there's two lasers. And this is to help us measure. These two lasers are about 10 centimeters apart from each other, so we can get a better grip on how big things are. Another five meters or so, Sarah, should be good. So what's most of this rock that we're looking okay. at here? So you can... Yeah, basalt rock um, I think you can all stop the winch there, Sarah. Just volcanism. keep an eye on the sonar. Somewhere. Um, now for nav. Between 50 and 90 million years ago or so. So there's no autos on. You're clear to go for the DVL. Let's awesome. give uh, engineering a second to sort their stuff out. that? Um. Oh. Why is that on? Okay. Let me know when you're ready there, Nev. What's that? 
Hot? Right. This? Yeah. This is Herc's sonar, right? So that's just what Herc is looking at. So you're you're the twenty you're this one over here. As long as you're not inside that ring there. Perfect. You're good, yeah, you're good rear. And then I try and figure out, you can trim your vertical thrusters with this, so that's how you kind of get your neutral point. And you leave that trim in, and then you go around up or down, and when you let go of it, it keeps like 20% down on her. So you have to figure that out. I think we're we're good with the DVL. You might be good with if you're having any uh, guff there. I think it's just the slope, so the DVL itself is like hitting one or two mm -hmm. sensors off the slope and not on the rest. Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, I'm gonna go auto depth, auto heading. Okay, and video, are you ready for the white balance? Ready. Can I see the arm with the, uh, or never mind, I have it in the, this pilot camera. It's excellent. Okay, arm's coming up. Okay, zoom in there. Back out. Uh, I got the other camera. Okay. How's that? That will do. You get focused. Okay, so we'll go black first so one moment oh you do that one more time And then white. Just gonna pull out real quick to double check that looks all right. All right, I think we're good. Thank you. Yeah. Michael, would you mind putting the uh, manip? down somewhere where I would see it in the still cam view. Right now it's high, yeah. Just a little further out and a little wee bit lower. I'm gonna try and focus on with that. Uh, a little little down and a little left. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Thank you, I'm just uh, firing away over here. Give me a sec. All right, pilots, are you guys ready to 
Sorry, Dwight, I'm Wait, just no, messing fine, around sorry. with the... You're still... Yeah. Okay. After Leela's done, Mike, do you, uh, are there other things you guys need to test or do? No, just uh, get up the hill. We're on a real sheer face here. So, yeah, I kind of want to get this stuff done. All right, and, I'm good uh, to go. And go on up the... Yeah, so uh, Cheyenne Nav, uh, what's what's the uh, distance and direction to the first waypoint from here? Arm is horrible. Yeah, so the first waypoint we is pretty much a beam of us, so we can't go in that direction. Um, we can head like. Um, is it is there is there a waypoint that you think we can get to? No. Uh, no. Not not one of our pre-plotted waypoints, um, but we're good to travel a little bit north east um, back to like where we started before our descent. So how does that line up with the slope that we're on? Um, we'd be going pretty parallel to the slope. Um, we could yeah that would it'd still be pretty parallel but parallel to the slope meaning we we wouldn't be able to change our depth uh we'd be getting into s some shallower yeah. Um, like that little nubbin that yeah. we were looking yeah. at. This is shallower. Can we go to the the crest of that? N yeah. No. Yeah. So, yeah, and did, can you put a target on the high pack screen? Did Mike just say no? No, I didn't say. Oh, no. okay. No. We're we're right now. We're set up to just go straight up this. Yeah. Uh, we can't really go ahead at all. Okay. Okay, but I also want to test the limits of what the ship can and cannot do right well we're gonna yeah we're gonna have to go this might just be a little ridge and that's it but right now it's like it's it's sheer in front of us so okay. i don't want to move the ship until we go up along this like yeah, if you look yeah. in the sonar right it's just a yeah can you so can we without moving the ship you can get up yeah sort we can of go on the up top along of this it. guy yeah yeah so, Sarah, just like easy up on the winch. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to move steadily. We're just going to go up. So it's just some slow pace and I'll just, we'll just drive along together. And if we, as we're flying, if it's possible, could do quick zooms on things, that would be great. Yeah, call them out and we'll do it. Looks like there's a stock something. Yeah, I don't know if that's a dead stock here. Oops, not on four. And uh, Primno, it may be on the left there. Oh, and Ooh. a big sponge on the left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, zooms on, on those things as you pass would be cool. And then Loopy, if as, yeah, whenever you type a submission, that'll take a picture, which is great. But as we zoom on things like that, if you could take pictures too, that would be awesome without writing. Okay, go ahead, video. You want the lasers on or off? Uh, on is fine. So you can just, yeah, exactly. Cap perk pictures. What's on the bottom? I can't quite tell yet. Hmm. But it looks sort of primnoity. Oh, you want the coral? Uh, either or both. The sponge is great. It's also coral is great. A, um, brittle star, looks like. Yep. Associate on the coral, and then. Do we have any more zoom on that? So you hold. Give us 15 meters delta, Sarah. You try for that. 
It's hard to tell what that is. It's bamboo, I think. That's a bamboo coral. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, I'm seeing a little of the black black banding. Oh, yep. Uh, thank you. That's good there. Did you get some pictures of that, Loopy? Sweet. Okay. Oh, wide. The sponge looks like some kind of uretid yeah, sponge, maybe. Yeah, aim for uh, this is how you 15 spell meters it. delta, there. So right now you're gone, like, too high. So maybe, you know, come down then a bit. If we could take a look at the stocked sponge quick, too. Over here? Yeah. Just quick while we're moving. This is a big, big yeah. face. Associate on it as well. Mm hmm. So it looks like there's more yeah, than one great. sponge in this view, is there? Okay, yeah. go ahead and zoom. Mm -hmm. And yet they look so different. And Why is that? If we could zoom especially on the head part of that, if that's possible, that'd be great. I think it's a yep. colophagus. So the colophagus, they have that, the, they attach their stalk in that concavity. Um, oh. Colophagus, I'll show you how to spell that, Loopy. Looks great. Um, with a, here, this is colophagus. And it has a brittle star or ophuroid associate on it. Hold on, give it a second to load. But you can, yeah, take some snapshots. Colophagus. Mm. Yep. Waving. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Full wide. <coughs> All right. And Carrying if you want, you off. don't even have to write like a whole sentence. You can just write colophagus, potentially. Uh, you know, or colophagus. I okay, get that. That's good. Just uh, a new shot later on. Uh, yeah, video, when I say full wide, if it, if it brings in stuff like that on the corners, feel free to punch it in a little bit. All right, copy that. We'll do. All right, continuing upward. Yeah. Ooh. More little coral and stocked sponge, friends. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I'm... Mike and Sarah, there's like a stick gain setting here, so usually I have mine at like 72 or 73. It just makes everything less sensitive. If I'm not trying to fight weather or anything like that. Yeah, it's for everything. As for this, uh, yeah, it's for everything. Yeah. So your thrusters in that one. Falling in those moves, unless either Hannaford says that, you know, we're not comfortable continuing in that direction for an ROV reason, or or uh, uh, we start talking about a sample collection. Sounds you can good. just do that in the background. Thank you. Okay, what do we got to look at? <laughs> Not a whole lot Not right much. here. Now the lilies are gone, you know? Why Why that patch and then now no more? A whole lot of uh, geology here that I am not versed in. <laughs> What's that little splotch down there just above the center of the screen? Maybe a, I don't know, maybe a rock, maybe a holothurian, can't tell. I can't see. What is it? Oh, I think I see. Oh, um, it's like over there. Sorry. I need to turn mm -hmm. on the draw. Oh, the darker patch yeah, there. Yeah, oh, exactly. Like That's the end of my leash down there. Let's see. No worries if we can't really get to it. Just trying to find find stuff to look at. Something. But it looks like a hollow floor. It yeah. does. Or like a cucumber. It won't be the best zoom, but go ahead and zoom in. It's OK. It's a little something. Away. good. Big purple blob. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm right on the end of the tether oh, here. It's going to be okay. pretty, pretty that's sickly. Right. <laughs> well, we got really butteroidal okay. rock crust texture. Just saw some nuts float by. And that, yeah, looks like a halterine of some yeah. kind. Zoom we out. don't got to make everyone sick. It's yeah. okay. That's good. We, we have identified what the blob is. <laughs> Woo -woo, sea cucumber. Nice. Oh, did I call it? Yes. And <laughs> and the lilies. Now we see the lilies. Sometimes it's hard to tell. You know they're there, but you can't see them when you're far, far yeah. up. And, hmm. and another really long sea li lily. This one might be in a good. Oh, and a big one too. Texture. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is that another crinoid right there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stocked crinoid. Nice. There's a couple, actually. Go ahead and zoom. So pretty. Yeah, maybe we can get Wobbly. some good close-up. Yeah. Really dark. Yeah. Ah, you can go bring oh. Argus down a few meters, Sarah. We got a bit of room there. Get a decent shot. Um, and if you're looking in the chat, uh, I would keep that open. Yeah, so Steve's been writing stuff in. Um, I'm saying I do not have access to the chat right now. He's thinking that the, the bamboos are echinomyces like but different. Small and different. So small and, and some of the other ones we were seeing different. So it seems we've been seeing multiple different kinds of bamboos. And you can, yeah, copy. Should I try for another zoom? There you go. Oh yeah, you can, yeah, going for a zoom. There you go. Nice. Oh, that that's true. Wow. That. You can really see the uh, orange branching out from the center. Yep. Yep, that's pretty, Oh, And it's uh, fun to see the way, there you can see the like um, five way radial symmetry. Yep. So what else can you tell us about this species of crinoid? How long has it existed here on Earth that we know of? <laughs> this sp specific species, I have no idea because I don't know what species of crinoid this is, but crinoids have been around for a very, very long time. Um, there are crinoid fossils from millions of years ago. Yeah, they've been along. I can't tell you from what. I don't know if that's Cambrian or, or when they came to be, but we can. I can look it up and get back to you. <laughs> yep. I could probably do that for you. Yeah. Yeah, back at home in West Virginia, I always find fossils of these laying around. They look like um, screws just lying in the rocks, and they're so fun to find. So are they typically shorter than this, or that's just like the ones y'all have seen are like shorter? Okay, come on. That's a particularly long stocked one. Um, sometimes they're shorter. Sometimes they're huge, too. There are even bigger ones than that. We've collected some really big crinoids before. Just another example of variability in the deep sea. Mm -hmm. Another fish of some kind. Looks somewhat similar. Yeah. Maybe another cusk eel. Yeah. Yeah. Another cusk eel.
This little fellow likes to put on a good show. So how are these ship moves feeling? Are we feeling like we can continue to make progress that way comfortably? So back on the topic of chronoids, they've existed for quite a sorry, long time. One, sorry, one second, Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, how's that feeling, those ship moves? Uh, yeah, they're pretty good. They've been able to keep in control okay. um, and slowly decreasing the um, angle. So we're going more northerly. So okay. we should be able to hit that waypoint. Great. So we, yeah, we don't need to like exactly hit the waypoint, really just moving upslope or moving to a position in which we could then continue upslope is the goal. Mm -hmm. um, at whatever speed ROV feels comfortable. Like we could go directly upslope from here now yeah. that we've kind of taken yeah. that bend, right? Like sure, looking at the high pack screen, if you just go due west. So then maybe mm -hmm. next ship That's move. all upslope, right? Yeah, that's all upslope. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Let this one get finished and let us get oriented here. So yeah, Sarah. So if we go if we go west, so then we want to be on a westerly heading, which this should be the slope. Uh, and then I'll get out and f stay out in front here. And there's another Cuskill. Maybe the same one. Hard to tell. <laughs> <laughs> We've commented on the same Cuskill ten times. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we might. Uh, actually, I don't know, but I think we might be in the same area. Yeah, we've been. We have. Just we've not thing. moved super far. So it's more like. Yeah, it's not wet. I have it at like, three hundred degrees, something like that. I let that Argus sonar scan one more time, and then, as I think this is it, and then just just make a move on this heading, which like 300 for the time being. Mhm. Mm and if you can just call continuous uh, until we need to change directions, that would be awesome, Cheyenne. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, is point two not so good? Point two. So we're at like 2,600 meters. It's often a little shallower, shallower than this, closer to like two th lower 2,000s and upper 1,000s that we see, uh, at least f where I'm familiar with in the Central Pacific, more like near Papahanao, Mokokea, where we saw higher densities of organisms. So I'm curious to see throughout the next couple watches how that picks up, uh, if we're seeing more, and also we're pretty likely to see different. I uh, just want to confirm the ROVs are ready for yep. the westerly move. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, we're good. Zoom in. Thanks for all the opportunistic zooms as we go. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Too far away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that on the left? Looks like, yeah. I don't think. Something kind of pokey. Oh. Too far away, but you can zoom in from here if you want to. Yep. Won't be great. Yeah, even just coarsely. I think it's an anemone. Yeah, that's an anemone. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Okay, full wide. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, there you go. I was just about to catch that. <laughs> so how do we have a good idea that this is an anemone? Because of the way that it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it is, it, it's, it's got a, it's fleshy looking and has a bunch of tentacles around a, um, Looks like around it's coming a from a central point. Yep. Yeah. You know, maybe from afar, you're not sure, is that an urchin? An urchin is then, once you zoom in, distinctly different. It's obviously a lot more, um, it's not fleshy, it's brittle and has rigid spines. Um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty typical anemone look. Are they ever stalked? Uh, some anemones you see stalks and others you don't really see stalks. Uh, that one didn't seem to have a huge stalk. Um, but, you know, for example, like a pom-pom anemone, you don't really see the stalk on that. Um, or a, or a uh, relicanthus anemone, the, really, the giant anemones with the long spindly tentacles, you don't really see a stalk there. Then there are tubed anemones where they retract into a tube that they secrete. Um, and then there are stalked anemones where there's a more definitive stalk. Interesting. Yeah, all lots of different body forms of those two. So we started uh, in the westerly direction, yep. but uh, there's still a little bit uncertain whether the ship will be able to make it. So we'll do this as kind of a test. Yeah. Okay. So they're going for the westerly as a test right now? Yes. Okay, sounds good. That's what we're hoping to do, test it out. Uh, that's my fault, sir. I wandered too far away. Just a quick recap on the things that we've seen so far. Um, yeah, good idea. Towards the beginning of the dive, when we were mid-water column, we saw some cool chandelier-looking siphonophore. Um, and currently, now that we're at the bottom of the seafloor, We've seen a few cuskeels. We've seen a bunch of crinoids, some brittle stars, some corals, um, most likely bamboo corals. And what am I missing? We just saw a sea anemone. Yeah, this is a nice big stocked one. Yeah. So this looks like a different stocked sponge, not a rosellid stocked sponge, but a euplectelid stocked sponge of some kind. Go ahead and zoom. Yeah, that's excellent, Sarah. Like, yeah, as we go, yeah, right, just so try and keep 15, keep an eye on that, and then keep trying to keep Perk in there, and there you go. Look so how intricate it is. Yeah, great that you took her caps. That's awesome. And I hear this is how you spell Wallisoma. Yeah. Ooh, Beautiful. for some reason got your view upset, or my view upset, um, B-O-L-O-S-O-M-A, Balosoma, possibly, sort of and then a coral next to it, next to it. yeah, Looks if we like could zoom real quick on that, I think it's also a bamboo, yeah, and I have like a pilot's camera over here, oh, look at the skeleton in the upper, like upper section, yeah, yeah, I think I mm -hmm. see some bands on that, so that's also a bamboo coral, I don't know what bamboo, some kind of branching bamboo, <laughs> Good um, here, thank you. Which one? Bolosoma, like Bolosoma. And I lost a monitor back here. Why? All good here? Yep, thank All you. All right, full wide. No, I know that's not the kind of sponge I'll clean my dishes with. No, um, so that's a kind of glass sponge. So those are, um, yeah, they they are generally crunchier than the the other types of sponges that you might imagine, and and that you, uh, I mean, now most sponges we use at home are also not really sponges, but would once have used to 
clean your dishes with. How did that become a thing, people using sponges from the sea to clean their dishes? <laughs> Good texture to do so. I don't know. You find these things uh, in the ocean, you're like, oh, seems like it could have an application. I don't know the whole backstory, though. Well, it seems like somebody had to figure out that one of those was uh, too glassy to use on their fingers. And had start to cut hauling themselves. in a bit there, Sarah. Well, sponges come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They're not exactly one thing. Now, I know what you're all thinking. What kind of sponge lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> I think there's really only one right answer for that one. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of stuff actually, like looks yeah. like this rock is kind of bare, but it's not. There's tons on it. Something. I'm guessing these are also branching bamboos, but if we could zoom on some of those bigger branching corals, that'd be great. So I have to say there was something that was more well, mobile in the lower. Here part of this rock. But I do want also, Dwight, are we, I want to make sure we're adequately testing ship's capabilities as you're hoping, so feel free to scooch us along. Well, as long as we're, you know, getting up to the top of this feature is kind of the goal okay. right now, but sure. also exploring and documenting things as we go, so no worries. Okay, thanks. Uh, zoom in there. Sure. <coughs> mm, yeah, also bamboo, you know I bamboo think. Coral. Yeah, not primnoid looking. Nope. That's great, thanks. So you can just write bamboo fan. Okay, yep. come Perfect. wide. I think there's, there's more. But wait, there's more. But wait. <laughs> um, I think that one to the left, I think, I think that middle one might be another bamboo coral. Yeah, I think so too. So maybe the and one... And then there's also a maybe dead stalk of a sponge or something. Yeah. We can keep on heading, heading up. No more zooms? Oh, what's who's, who's oh, the bottom red, left? Yeah, red, bottom left red thing. thing. It almost looks like an anthemastus. Right here or uh, further right left? Right to the bottom of the screen. Red. Yep. I think Maybe it's a mushroom coral. Drop anthemastus. down a few meters, Sarah. Thank you. It also looks like some sort of sea stone. Yeah, you're, you're, that'll be okay. Yeah, it's only only like three or four meters just to, just to keep this closer to 15 than 20. Ooh. Zoom in. Yep. And someone else swimming going. next to it. Yep. Oh, it's a, it's a oh, wow. worm. Chase swimming worm. Swimming one. Ooh, a polychaete. Swimming polychaete. That's an anthemastus mushroom coral. You can write that in there. We don't. Wow. Oh, wow. Crazy. Look at that movement. How big do you think that is? Um, according to the lasers, it looks yeah. like about uh, six or seven, six, seven centimeters. centimeters. Yeah. Some kind of swimming polychaete. Beautiful. Yeah. I'll That's the up. money shot right there. <laughs> wow, perfect. And you can just take pictures. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. Do you want to go down and get the zoom on the... I think we can continue to head up. Okay. I saw the... That's a mushroom coral, yep. Anthemastus. Did you get that? Um, okay. Okay, yeah. so come in on the winch. Please. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a sponge or was a sponge. Is it dead? I can't tell from, from here right now. Some sponges like look like they might be dead because they actually are always carrying a little bit of sediment on their spicules on the outside. Um, like the rosellid sponges do that. Uh, and some of the others. Some are, are nice and white all the time. Others are kind of have this off-white color, so you can't always easily tell without zooming whether something's alive or not. 
Um, Something interesting to note might be that um, a lot of what we were seeing is kind of on the other side of the seamount, but there's likely more to come. Yeah. And if you are just tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. How you doing? We are here at the bottom of the ocean at the Kingman Reef, which is within the Pacific yeah, Island Islands. Stool. Yeah. Marine National Monument. We are on our first cruise of the season, NA 149, to the Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atolls. And we are currently at the bottom of the ocean, about 2,602 meters below the ocean surface. And this is our second dive of our expedition. Looks like there's a little red thing um, towards the bottom of the screen now. Oh yeah. We could get a little bit of a zoom. Go ahead and zoom. Oh, shrimp. <laughs> oh. It almost, yeah, that's cool. Look at Some, that, dude. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it looks like it, it has, like, blue that. antenna. Yeah, it's kind of like iridescent oh. antenna. Yeah. Very nice. So one thing to keep in mind, Loopy, is, like, when it's swaying around like this, the pictures are all going to be blurry, and sometimes it's hard when we're zoomed wow. this far, but if there's a moment where it's not swaying around, it's a good time to, like, there take a shot yep awesome. exactly thank you great thank you and you can just write shrimp zooms uh no that was when we were floating. iridescent oh uh, we were backing up from like here to here yeah we should be good to go if you want to zoom out okay full wide So for those of you who are interested in a more deep sea exploration and education, we encourage you to visit our resources on our education tab on our website and on the Deep Ocean Education Project website as well. That is deepseaoceaneducation.org. It's a combination of you, us, the well, Ocean I think Exploration it's, Trust. It's just the Sorry. Oh, it's a combo of OET, the NOAA Ocean Exploration, and Schmidt Ocean Institute. So you can see here, Sarah, like we're... Yeah.
Um, front row, how's it going so far with um, with ship stability and com well, comfort? Well, we're just talking about that. The ship's perfectly stable, but we've exhausted our scope here right now. Uh huh. Uh, you know, you need a ship move like very often, regularly. So we need a ship move. Um, however, yeah, um, it's not really sheer anymore. Like you, you, yeah. you can tr try and move as aggressively up the slope as you uh, like. We were told yep. 30 degrees off the bow. Yep. And we were told that you know we can't go directly up the slope. Okay. So it's up to it's up to you folks. I don't want to do anything too aggressive. We're not on the shear thing anymore. If we tried yep. what we were told for a start, like if we could go 30 degrees off. Yep. Um, I would like that. But it, it, the slope is relieving too. So maybe when we get a little bit further along, we can try and be a bit more aggressive because it, that way if it falls off, we'll have time to react. Okay. Sounds good. Um, if we're going to, since we're holding right now before we pull in a ship move, uh, Adam's hoping to collect a rock, so if it yeah. looks like any of these could be loose, could be a good time to do that. I'll get down there a little closer, moving. try and see. If there's a spot that's comfortable for you to test that out. I don't like, yeah, we have that camera right out on the edge of the porch. Yeah, Adam, like over here, right? If we move along. So we might need a move before we can pick up a rock because the problem, we have the still camera on the porch, so I don't want to use the porch to yeah. butt up against the, That's cool. the right. face. Yeah, okay. This spot is not important, it's just somewhere in the vicinity. Sounds good. Did you catch that, Hannaford? Yeah, like I, w I would just recommend just try and do your ship move up yeah. the slope as much as we can. Sure, let's do that then. All um, right. The <laughs> Um, how many meters do we want? Do you want to start with like... We're close by, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go more than 10. Let's go 10 at point two. Okay. And then if anything, you're not going to have to go up very far to clear this, so it's not that scary. If anything goes wrong, I'll just tell you. Just go up. All right. We'll have awesome. time. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're going to try to move up the slope a little bit. Cheyenne, would it be possible while we're waiting on the ship move to just um, zoom out a little bit on high pack so we can take a look at the larger landscape? Uh, yep. Thank you. 
So once, so right now we're heading, yeah, sort of to that less steep area direction waypoint one ish, right? Yeah, where Cheyenne's motioning. Um, but then that would be that would be upslope in this direction, right? And if they were to be blown off towards the west, then we would knock into that steep slope if we were up there. Um, uh, Hannaford, is there anywhere on on this on high pack that you feel we might be able to comfortably get a little bit shallower, like to navigate upward? Mm. Well, like ahead of us towards waypoint, I'm looking at high pack. Yep, yep, same. Towards waypoint one, the contour lines going west from there are not so steep as they are right where we are. So, like, if okay, we if yep. we could go ahead and get into that stuff, yep. if it's to be believed, it seems like a little less risky than where we are. Okay, then then yeah, let's try that. So our current ship move, right, Cheyenne, is is current is about thirty degrees. Uh, it's forty degrees. Forty degrees. And okay. we have completed it. It was only ten meters. Okay. Yeah. So just call call in another one. Uh, just keep 10 at a time, but that mm -hmm. was fine. I didn't yep. see anything wrong. You can almost keep them going, too, if you can catch them in time. Okay. Do you want to try a little bit more aggressive, like 30? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Let's do a 30-meter ship move and then maybe check out if we can get a rock before the mm -hmm. next one. And then right. keep on going. So they're calling in 40-degree 40 40 ship moves. And then once we're over there, Hannaford thinks we might be able to make our way up that way. If that, does that sound good to you? Zero, four, zero, yep. Uh, sorry, yes, I, I think it was a 30 or 40 meter, 40 degree ship move. And then m potentially could go up that way. Does that sound appealing? Okay, okay. Um, while we're waiting on this, is there anything, if we zoom in slightly, is there anything to be staring at? I don't know. I haven't been seeing much, um, but who knows? Who knows? Even just, yeah, taking a glance around at the rocks, what we got? Something hanging out, like on the right of the screen. It's probably just another bamboo. Take a look. Sorry, I'm on mute. 
Yeah. Okay, zoom in there. Yeah. Yeah. Looks bamboo-y. With an associate bamboo on the end. Bamboo-y. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some it's kind like of branching Zelda. bamboo with an ophiroid. And I'll show you how to spell ophiroid. That's good. Thank you. Okay. I think there was one next to it, but most likely another bamboo coral. Oh, I mean out of the frame. Yeah. Okay, just full wide. Where's the other one? Up there. Yeah. Okay, go in on it, yeah. Right. Just staring out what we got. Yep. <laughs> while we wait. <laughs> yep, that's yeah. another. Yep. See all their polyps yeah, out. Yeah, so you really come cool. up now. Okay, full wide. Great, thank you. And they're almost, some of those, if you saw, Lupi, I know you got a picture of that just now. We don't have to go back and look at it, but those tiny little white stalks in the background. And if we had had a better, if we had had a second longer, but those might be those, the carnivorous clatorizer sponges. I'd be really interested to know whether they're all the same uh, like type of yeah. coral or whether they're subspecies or whether they're completely different, yeah. different species in themselves. Population yes. dynamics at this um, depth is really different from the land. Zoom in there quick. Might not oh have yeah. very long, but Crinoid. let's give it a go. Ooh. So that's the bamboo, but above, can we take a peek up? Pan up a little. That's okay, I'll come up. Shrimp and a yellow crinoid. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Thanks. And Hannaford, whenever you're ready to start scoping for a rock spot. Yeah, I think uh, see Argus is kind of over the ridge, so I'm kind of sure. eager to just see what's yeah. Let's do just it. Just beyond us here. Do we want to continue to go over this ridge, or do you want to stop and? Uh, I think we want to stop and grab a rock if we cool. can do that. Yeah. The ship is doing really well at this like northeastern movement. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, I mean, it's still going up pretty good here, but it's... Uh, if you could note that too, that'd be great, Loopy. So that submit, and then that the ship is doing well at this heading, which is kind of 40 degrees. So I had a question from the chat. Are some sponges carnivorous? Yeah. So that one that I was just mentioning, the Clatorhiza sponge, is a carnivorous sponge. Um, so yes, some indeed are carnivorous. Other, most sponges are just kind of filtering what they can get from the from the water column. Uh, they have these cool cells lining, so they basically come pump water through their bodies and into different chambers. And those chambers are lined generally with cells called collar cells um, or coanocytes. Are we still moving or is he? Uh, we got about a meter left. Okay. Yeah, you can keep moving along if that's what uh, science yeah. wants there. Yeah. yeah, just until there's a spot where you feel comfortable looking for a rock. Yep. Thank you. Yep, just keep moving until then. Um, and those collar cells basically have little whips or they're called flagella that then uh, try and catch anything that they can from the water that's being pumped through those chambers. Um, so that's how most sponges eat. And then the water, once it's been filtered, all goes out out other, other holes in the sponge's body. Well, I guess that makes sense why SpongeBob eats Krabby Patties. <laughs> Another SpongeBob joke for you. Mm. 
Uh, we might be able to get something here. I'd, I would definitely go for it if it weren't for the camera there. Yeah. I mm -hmm. just kind of want something a bit flatter. That's flatter, all I'm concerned yeah. with. Are we, yeah, we can move up on top of that flatter section kind of towards under the ship if that's, or not under the ship, but north of the ship if that's yeah. um, what looks good to you. Yeah, I think that's what we're getting into yeah, here. Yeah, sounds good. Do we need to move the ship a little bit north, or are you good to...? I think... Um, I think we want to go, like, a, as northerly as we can, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to... If those moves that you're asking look look fine and, you, you know, you feel confident, ask them for a few more degrees mm -hmm. into it. Sounds good. Uh, so Sarah, I have a question for you. Sure. So are brittle stars true sea stars? Yeah, so um, brittle stars are, brittle stars and sea stars are two sister clades technically. So the, um, just make sure of the yeah. name. Yep, that's right. Yeah, so the class for sea stars is asteroida, asteroidia, and then the class for brittle stars is ophiord. Oh, oh my gosh, I can never pronounce it correctly. Ophiroidia. Um, and they are sister clades, but they come from the same subphylum of asteroid, asterozo asterozoa. Um, so they're not, so I guess you could call them true sea stars? Yes. Yeah, the true sea stars are usually all those ones that are in the, in the asteroidia and then the brittle stars. They're very closely related, like the most closely re related of, of, uh, of the other kind of germs. You know, they look like they have similar body plans. They have completely different structures, correct? Uh, no, no, they're, they have similar structures, and uh, actually there are similar st structures also within even uh, urchins and sea cucumbers, although those two are, are more different. Um, but, yeah, they have different, different uh, kind of slightly different me mechanisms of locomotion, um, but I wouldn't say completely different because there are there are many other things that are truly completely different. Those two actually still have a lot of similarities. So we're seeing some more colophagus stocked sponges, the little little stocked sponges. If you remember how to spell that one from earlier, and I'm also seeing some dead, uh, looks like dead foraid sponges were laying around. Um, yeah, um, I guess you're gonna and have to. And there's a sea yeah. lily yeah, up in up. front of us, a big stocked crinoid. Uh, Sorry, I was going to go get you a Zoom, but You're we've got to get Argus that's up a fine. little bit here. That's fine. Do your thing. I'm just calling stuff out whenever we have time for Zooms. That's great. Um, I don't know what this... Oh, there. That's another stocked crinoid. It's a big wow, stocked it's crinoid. Big one. Those, these good. are oh, some of the, like, the longer st stocks I've ever seen. Well, look how feathery it is. It almost looks like a flower. Yeah, there are a ton of them right here, so we're noticing we're like in a slightly sandier, flatter patch, and it seems like now all of a sudden there's this field of, of sea lilies. Beautiful. I think one thing that amazes me is that the crinoids, brittle stars, sea stars, sea cucumbers, they're all under that same branch of the tree of life, yeah. which is echinoderms. Yep. Yeah. Life is super, super unique at these depths, so you can really see anything and then find out that they are truly related. So for you, Sarah, on average, how often do you think we come across crinoids? Do you think we find them just as much as sea sponges or corals? Like, what's the uh, ratio, would you say, that they are on ocean floor? Yeah, we see crinoids all the time. Um, and we often Maybe see... Maybe let's face the slope a little bit more, Sarah, see if we can see some more stuff as we go by. So a little, little bit to port often see crinoids, especially um, feather stars, as associates on corals and sponges. So 
So we're doing pretty good with these moves. Okay. Um, I'll just keep calling them if y'all want to let me know if you want to stop and uh, do the rock sampling. Yeah, that sounds good. Right now, it looks like now that we're on top, this is all kind of more cemented together. Um, so, yeah, we can... Hannaford, it was a little further north, right, that you'd be comfortable maybe starting to go upslope. So maybe just keep, yeah, I think keep so, putting in moves more. until we reach the base of that, that area, and then uh, we'll see where we're at. was and that last move Cheyenne when was that 20 degrees or something would you call when it was a bit more uh, aggressively north yeah sure uh, it was about I've been calling zero four zero and I called zero five zero three five zero three okay yeah. so just a little adjustment yeah uh, okay yeah, yeah, they can do three five. That's not too crazy though. Maybe we should try. Uh, do you want to try the next one, like a three zero? See how that goes. Yeah, we can try that. Sorry, Bridge. Uh, they're just discussing. Um, can we go uh, two zero meters at zero three zero and point two knots? Yes, please. Thank you. So if you are joining us for the first time, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are here at the bottom of the Central Pacific Ocean at the Kingman Reef. And our expedition is the NA-149 Kingman Palmer Atoll. And it's our first expedition of the season for this year. We are currently about 2,582 meters below the ocean surface. And right now we are seeing our ROV Hercules investigating the ocean floor. What we are looking at are some really interesting rocks that contains something called ferromanganese crusts. Also floating by, we see some marine snow. And this second POV shot you see is coming from our other ROV, Atalanta. Atalanta sits right above Hercules to help provide stabilization and also to provide camera fees to see what Hercules is up to. Some of us feels as that <laughs> the ROV movement is kind of resembling a walking dog on a short leash. Can your ROV team help explain why that is? Yeah, come down a little bit. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Uh, yeah, sure. Can you help explain why it's kind of difficult to uh, pilot the ROVs? It's almost like resembling walking a dog on a short leash. Well, yeah, um, so, you know, Her Hercules is on a short lease from Atalanta, 30 meters, and then that Atalanta's onto the ship, so we, we Hercules can only really stray like 30 meters from Atalanta before we start pulling things around. When the ship moves, we're, we're two and a half kilometers underwater, so that all takes time to react, and then in, in our case is a good example right now, 
where we, we want to go up the slope, but the ship can't go in that directly in that direction. So we're kind of like skirting a along it, and it makes it a little bit uh, less than ideal for us to fly because we can't we can't go up straight up the slope. We're going across it, but we're trying to look up it. So if we're looking in the direction where we're going, we're we're kind of not normal to the slope. We're just looking like across it. And it's not really ideal. But then if we're looking normal to or straight at the slope, then we're not actually moving in that direction. So it gets, everything works best when we can all move in the same direction, but sometimes we can't. And then this is, we're just trying to mitigate it this way. Sorry, I just want to butt in. There's something yep. on the on the left. I don't know if we can zoom in and see. Yeah. Something. What cool. It is. Oh, oh, it's, oh a, it's a fish. It's a fish of some kind. Almost looks like an eel. It's a big long tail. Round head. Oh yeah, big head. Think we'll be able to ID that? Yeah, well, if, if we, we get, if in we a can get a little closer. zoom. Think? At okay, least a general. A little bit of zoom, not too much. I'll keep flying oh, yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's an eel thing. Aww. It's just a head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's upside down, too. Oh. You have a very large brain. <laughs> Got a lot of thinking to do. Yeah. Is this a... I need to open all my eel stuff. It's too bad eel. about these lasers. Oh, yeah. Great picture. Wow. <laughs> cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get something for you in a second, Loopy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one. So cute. I think it's a cuskeel of some kind. Is it typical I'll for them to be upside down that way? Mm. Great question. Not sure. Wow. Super close He's up coming shot. To yeah. <laughs> Great pictures. Um, is it upside down? Looks. It looks I mean, it's. I don't know. I just think I it looks like a brain. Yeah. It looks really smart. I don't smart. know. That looks it's like it's swimming down. parallel to the seamount, but I guess we uh -oh, can't really get uh -oh, a good. Oh, buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Collision. Uh -huh. Oh, no, you're right. I think it was right uh -huh. side up. Oh, yep. It's just got a weird head. Yeah. Some kind of ophitted, so some kind of cusk eel. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one, so you can just put ophitted right for now. So that's O, O P H I D I I D. Yep, spotted an ophitted fish. Am I? Okay. Ah, I see. Yep. Let's see. Then a ran arbitrary area. Oh. Sounds good. Um, could we zoom? Uh, our wind is getting above, what was that? Above 20 knots. Above 20 For sure. So why don't we put in an arbitrary waypoint somewhere towards the base of that slope where we then will feel comfortable moving a bit more upslope. 
No, yeah, it's so no problem. So that's towards waypoint one. Where is waypoint two? Oh, we're all whipped around. Sorry. I did that. So do we want to try going towards waypoint one then? Yeah, we've been making the moves like yeah. more, more, more aggressive northerly, so just keep at it. As yeah. I don't see, it's not really struggling at all. Yeah. yeah, good with me. And I think we can maybe do bigger moves it seems like we're doing we're hanging around quite a bit so if everyone's good with that i want to see like small moves but small? you can keep them going i don't okay. i don't care yeah, if you do good. 60 meters continuously but I, I don't want more than a 20 meter move okay small right. continuous moves sounds good And Cheyenne, uh, while we're, we may be like then start talking about what we're seeing in front of us and animals and such, but feel free to continue. There's um, a shrimp also. Yes, we did see that beautiful shrimp. Um, Plenty else? of brittle stars, of course. Yeah. It's been a great start. So Sarah, do you know much about uh, clams? Do they so grow in this area? Do they inhabit this area? I'm not too sure, but Leila, do you have any input? Perhaps not, but um, yeah, we haven't seen any bivalves so yeah. far, but. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but let me see. If uh, I can so do the bridge yeah, doesn't really like this direction. Okay. Yeah, the ship's been moving. Did that move pretty well, but they they don't like it. Don't feel comfortable. Is there yeah. a way to split the difference a little to try maybe like uh, not quite aggressively 300, but closer to like 350 or mm -hmm. or or north? You know. Uh, yes, I will. Can you see how that's going? That's slightly upslope, but not mm -hmm. a, not as aggressive and not as opposing.
I imagine that might be, I don't know, perhaps even harder than going opposite the forces to go kind of 90 degrees. We'll see what they think. Just getting back briefly to the bivalve comment. Um, bivalves are definitely possible at this depth, but not haven't seen anything yet. It's nothing observed just yet in this area. area. So a lot of what we know about the deep oceans comes not only from surveys like this, but also from the mm -hmm. geologic record. Okay. What what uh, did they say in response to that? Yeah. So they don't they don't like north either. They okay. they like south southwest. Okay. So we could still move. <laughs> so that's we can either so we could basically either go the direction we were going at first, 30 degrees, or the opposite direction to that. Okay. So it's feeling like making our way upslope might not really be possible. Yeah. Um, um, okay, yeah. then we can, uh, let's continue in that 30 degree direction, just see if we can like make some, some progress to get, get you know, somewhere between, uh, the 20s were okay too, right? Maybe try 20 degrees again, see if we can get a little upslope, see something a little different, and then uh, maybe as the watch change approaches, we'll make a call on if, if we think it's worth it to continue or not. Okay. Uh, come down a little bit, Sarah. We'll try and look at something while we're waiting here. Hey, Cheyenne, what was that call that you just made? Uh, 20 meters, 030. Zero, zero. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, there was oh a, yes, um, sorry. 
probably a stocked sponge that we just passed. Um, it's all right that <laughs> we passed it. Currently, we're just figuring out a few logistical things about our exploration today. There's just some some issues with the weather, but working it out. Here it looks like we have Go ahead and a zoom. dead sponge, potentially. Yes, the ones on the bottom and the bottom left and the top for sure yeah. dead. Oh, but this like one, an associate I, I don't know. This one might be alive. Maybe an, an arthropod? Um, with some kind of a... Shrimpy yeah, thing? it doesn't quite look squat lobstery. It's not. Oh. Uh, Maybe it's so hard to see. It's got that pointy nose. Yeah. I'll go back. No worries. Yeah, that looks like a dead stock too, actually. Yep. Yeah. Probably used to be some big bolosoma. Mm -hmm. All right. Come wide. Okay, um, so we're gonna keep shuffling. Yeah, we're just at shuffling. Twenty degrees. Twenty degrees. Cheyenne, what was that for my reference as well? Sorry, I was on You're mute. Good. Um, our heading shifted down more to like eighty, so it's probably gonna be. Um, in the 30, 40 range instead of 20. They just want to keep it within 40 degrees of the heading. Okay, got Ooh, it. Ooh, swimming. Okay. A swimming. A swimming holothurian. Like yeah. What are they called? Um, sea fish? Get back in the light. No, oh. headless chicken, <laughs> something like the, that. The headless chicken was one of those. <laughs> it chicken. was one of those. This is not the headless chicken, but yeah, what uh, what does that fall under? I don't recall. Let me see. Um, okay, well, baby steps in whichever direction we can continue in is what we got to work with. Uh, I see. An enemy? Yep. Yep, another anemone. Zoom in. A headless chicken is a hollow thurian. Yeah, but it's not a headless Thur chicken. Oh, yes, correct. <laughs> but for my uh, can we do question. another uh, two zero meters at zero four zero degrees and point two knots? All right. Zoom. Thank you. Come on, we're on the we're on the deck there. Can't get a good shot. Also potentially looked like a Chrysogorgid right next to that anemone, but I didn't quite get a good. I didn't look catch at that it. either. Oh yeah, uh, I think that that there is a bamboo. 
I think there might have been another thing next to it, but thank you for checking back there, yeah. Um, Mike would have, or Michael would a fly by sample at any point be possible? Or are we moving too fast? Maybe when we're at the, if we're out way out ahead, I don't know. Yeah, it's Some not the it's not the speed. Yeah. Uh, if you see something, let's try it. I'm, yeah. I'm just uh, so maybe maybe not. It depends what the setup is. The sure. only thing I worry about is that camera out on the porch. Is yep. Are so we still kind of too steep? I don't. No, not in general. It's just rocky, right? It depends what it is. So let's when okay. you see something, let's go for it. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get my bearing on how big these all look very large right now. But if we <laughs> see something that's not extremely large, the cantaloupe-sized angular rock is our ideal candidate. Okay. What does cantaloupe translate to in terms of like centimeters? Do you think? Let's say like twenty centimeters ish. Okay. 2030, you know, some, something like cool. that. Mm -hmm. cool. Not that one? 20 centimeters, yeah. Um, nothing in view right now. That all looks very attached. Okay, so yeah, like that last move was, was fine. Mm -hmm. He's happy with those. It doesn't really get us where we're trying to go. Looks like we have another sea cucumber in that bottom right area. Oh, indeed. Bridge nav. Uh, let's go another two zero meters at zero three five degrees like and point two nine. 